All right, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well, and in this video I'm going to help you get started with HTML. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to tell you why you should learn HTML. HTML is an acronym for Hypertext Markup Language. It's the most basic building block of the web. It allows you to add, change, and remove website content. And that's a good thing to know. It's mandatory to know for web developers if you would like to enter that career field. It's useful for software developers, marketing and sales professionals if you need to edit a listing for your company. Business owners, you could make your own website. And freelancers, people would pay good money Money for a good website. Heck, you might as well add HTML to your resume. Can't hurt. And learning HTML is super easy. This full course is only going to be about an hour. Anybody can learn HTML, even you. Yes, whoever's watching this video, learn HTML. It's super easy. What do you have to lose? Building a website is a lot like building a house. First, we need a solid foundation and we need to build a skeletal structure. That's where HTML comes in. It's the most basic building block of the web. Then after that, we can add CSS. CSS is cascading style sheets. With CSS, we can style, color, and change the appearance of a web page. And lastly, there's JavaScript. JavaScript adds functionality to a web page. So in a house, this could be like plumbing, heating and air conditioning, and electricity. So it adds functionality. And when you combine these three levels, Levels, you have a good functioning web page. But you need to start somewhere, so that's why you're gonna learn HTML first. What will you need? You'll need a web browser. Use whatever web browser that you like, just please do not use Internet Explorer. And we'll also need a text editor to write HTML code. You can use VS Code, Sublime Text. Heck, you can even use Notepad, but I prefer VS Code, so I'll show you where to download that. Just head to code.visualstudio.com and download the correct version for your operating system. I'm running Windows, so I'm going to install the Windows version. Then I will open when done. Accept the agreement. Yes, I actually did read it that fast. I would recommend creating a desktop icon and make sure Add to Path is selected. Next, and install. And then you might as well launch this bad boy. So finish. We are now within VS Code. The first thing I recommend is to download the live server extension so that after saving an HTML document, we can immediately refresh a web page. So underneath the search box for extensions, we are looking for live server and install this version. Then after downloading the live server extension, we will create a new folder under the Explorer tab, open folder, Wherever you want, create a new folder. I'll create this on my desktop just for convenience. I'm going to create a new folder. I'll name this website or whatever you want, doesn't matter. Then select folder. And within our website folder, we're going to create a new file. Name this index.html. Whatever file you would like to be the homepage of your website, you'll want to name that as index.html. When a connection is made to a website without a specific file in the URL, most servers by default will return the index.html file as a landing page. So this index.html file will be the homepage, the landing page of our website. At the top of our document, we're going to type this within angle brackets, exclamation point, doc type HTML. HTML documents should start with this declaration to be compliant with basic HTML standards. It lets a visitor's web browser know that this is an HTML5 document. And following this text, we'll create a pair of HTML tags. Tags are the keywords within angle brackets that a web page uses to define how your web browser will format and display content. And usually these come in pairs. So we'll need an opening HTML tag and a closing HTML tag. All of our HTML code will be within these HTML tags. So the HTML element represents the root of an HTML document, and there's two major sections, head and body. So let's create a pair of head tags. Head represents information about a web page, and there is also body as well. So create a pair of body tags. The body is what you would like to display to a user. The head is information about the web page. One thing that we can add to the head of our document is a title. So we'll need a pair of title tags. And let's create a title for our website. My first 
website, and then let's save. Let's open this document. So I'm going to right click, open with live server. So the title of this web page is my first website. And you may have noticed that this web browser was opened with Edge. So you can actually change that to a different web browser. And here's how. Go to File, Preferences, Settings, underneath Extensions, head to Live Server Config, Custom Browser, and select a web browser of your choosing. So right click, open with Live Server and we are now using a different web browser. So I'm just going to put my web browser and VS Code side by side. Now let's add some text to the body of our web page. Type whatever you want. I like pizza. Then I'm going to save. There we go. We added some text to the body of our HTML document. And we can also use a pair of header tags. So surround some text with H1. This is the largest header tag and then make sure to close it afterwards. Okay, so then we have H2, which is smaller. We have H3, H4, H5, and the last one is H6. So if you need some sort of title for your web page, you can always place some text within a pair of H1 header tags. Before I discuss p tags, we should discuss what elements are. Elements embody the opening tag, any content within, and the closing tag. So for example, this is a opening title tag and a closing title tag. And all of these together, including any content within, is known as the title element. So that's the difference between tags and elements. Tags make up a portion of elements. And with that out of the way, we can move on to paragraph elements. Paragraph elements are made up of p tags. We need an opening p tag and a closing p tag. And we can type some text within these paragraph tags. This is some sample text. Browsers automatically add a blank line before and after any paragraph elements. Also, if you need some longer sample text, there is a shortcut. Type lorem, then tab and that will create some sample text for you. And let's create another paragraph element. So we need an opening p tag and a closing p tag. I would like some more sample text. I will type lorem, then tab. And we now have two paragraph elements. If you need a paragraph of information to display with blank lines before and after, you can always surround some text within a pair of p tags. Now there's also a br element, and these do not need closing tags. It's only an opening tag. Wherever you would like to add a line break, just add a br element. So let's say I would like to space out these header tags. Well, I can add a line break between each of these. If you ever need a line break, just use a br element. And like I said, there's no closing tag with these elements. There's also an hr element, and I do not mean human resources. I mean horizontal rule. If you ever need to divide your page section by section, you can always add a horizontal rule. Let's say that we have a title to this web page. I'll create an H1 header tag. This is my website. And then I'm just going to close this. What if I would like to divide this web page section by section? I can always add a horizontal rule by using an HR element. And there is no closing tag with this element. You just type HR with an angle brackets. And this will divide a section of your web page and add a horizontal rule, which looks pretty nice. So that is the HR element. And the last thing we're going to discuss for this topic is comments. Comments will not be displayed within the body of your document. It's more or less a note for yourself or other developers. To create a comment, we need an angle bracket, exclamation point, then two dashes. And this will create the ending of your comment, which is an arrow pointing to the right. So anything between these two arrows will be a comment. I'll leave a comment for, I don't know, myself. This is the best website ever. So as you can see, this will not be displayed within my web page. It's basically used as a note for yourself or for other people looking over this HTML document. So yeah, those are comments. Well, everybody, that is the basics of HTML. In the next video, we will discuss how we can include images within our web page. So yeah, if you liked this video, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.